I'm fortunate enough to live in an area where there is an ATSC 3.0 broadcast. I'm only about 15 miles away from what is dubbed the 3.0 Lighthouse for Buffalo, WNYO, and I'm able to receive everything being broadcast. I've done many tests, such as with its response to multipath interference, decoding various SNRs, and the quality of the broadcast itself. ATSC 3.0 is still in the early stages of broadcast, and it's got a long future ahead of it. Join me as I explore ATSC 3.0 and the broadcast of it in Western New York. Hi, welcome back to Western New York Over the Air. Today I'll be discussing ATSC 3.0 the future of over-the-air TV broadcasts in the United States. All right, so as a point of reference, let's look at ATSC 1.0. So the SNR of ATSC 1.0 is 15.2 decibels, and this can carry a maximum bit rate of 19.39 megabits per second. The modulation used is 8 VSB. But the way that I think about this is if you're in a bubble of 15.2 or greater, then you're good. With this standard, there's just the one SNR. The SNR is the point at which the FEC has too many errors for it to correct, in which it will no longer be able to decode a good signal. All right, so that's ATSC 1.0. All right, so right away, getting this out there, if you don't know, ATSC 3.0 allows for transmission of up to 4K at 120 frames per second, and in the future it is upgradable for 8K broadcasts. There's a bunch of circles and all these numbers. Let me dissect it a little bit for you. So the SNR of ATSC3 isn't just one defined point like 1.0. It isn't 15.2. It can range from negative 5.5, which is insanely robust, all the way up to 36 and a half decibels, which honestly would have the range of a cell tower, but I'll get into that later. Um, so this would just be a hypothetical, this demonstration that I'm giving you with these circles would be a hypothetical situation with four PLPs. So what a PLP is, they are physical layer pipes and they can supply different video in the same six megahertz channel. So it's different than traditional multiplexing. PLPs have different SNRs. So one SNR may be very robust, the other one maybe not so much. So let's look at this scenario. So this hypothetical situation has um, a lowest PLP with a decent range. So you can see all these houses which represent RX receive locations. And you can see that the first house has an SNR that they're picking up a high enough SNR in order to get the 4K at 120 frames per second video. Now, the second house and the third house and the fourth house, their SNR is not high enough. Again, this isn't based on mileage or kilometers away from the transmitter. If you have an antenna with higher gain or low noise, SNR is a ratio. So it depends on your equipment that you're using and also depends on the noise in your area and how far away. So this is just kind of like a bubble representation of what people would be getting. Also, it's important to note, the more robust it is, the less stuff you can put in the six megahertz span, if that makes sense. Also, depending on the SNR, the bit rate can vary from one megabit per second all the way up to 57, which is insane. Lastly, OFDM modulation is used, which is way better than 8VSB. It handles multipath interference so much better. All right, here's a comparison of multipath interference from 1.0 and 3.0. The TV is displaying the ATSC 1.0, and the iPad on the bottom is displaying the ATSC 3.0. Turn it back, I'll be fine. I'm All right, so for this next uh, hypothetical situation, this is what I call ATSC 3.0 extremes. This would have a negative 5.5 decibel SNR in which you would only be able to have a quarter HD or 540p stream at 30 frames per second. 
I mean, this is so low that we could actually start comparing this to NTSC Broadcast Analog, which I know may excite a few people. Um, but ultimately, I am unsure how this would compare, mainly just because I would have to set up an NTSC Broadcast alongside a negative 5.5 decibel ATSC 3.0 broadcast, which in the future, if there is a modulator that can spit out a 3.0 signal that has that robust of an SNR, I could try to compare it on the same frequency, same output power, and use two different coaxial cables and gauge you know, how far is that signal going? I could test all of that out once the equipment is available. Um, but as of right now, there's no way for me to tell. Also, I don't think I need to explain what the uh, TRAPO implications are or e-skip implications are for something like this. That'd be pretty cool. All right, so this is now the complete opposite of what I was just talking about a second ago. This would be if you had the highest possible SNR, which is the lowest possible range. And I think I had said earlier that it would be like having the range of a cell tower, and that's not too far off. You could possibly get 10 4K channels or up to 100 quarter HD channels in the same 6 megahertz band. That's insane. But again, the coverage would be very poor. So it's a trade-off. The higher the SNR, the more stuff you can put in that 6 megahertz band, but the less range it has. The poorer the signal, the more range you have. So it's a trade-off. And broadcasters have been usually kind of doing a middle ground, which leads me to the next topic. All right, so here's a representation with actual stations. This is what my local ATSC 3.0 station WNYO is like. From what I can tell, it has three PLPs, um, with my TV Buffalo being the most robust, Fox 29 being very robust as well, but just not as robust. And then uh, 2, 4, and 7 there are the least robust and have been the hardest to get in. These SNRs aren't a whole lot different than the current ATSC 1.0 standard. It's hovering around the 13 to 16 decibel range for these five stations, with my TV obviously being the lowest and those three stations on the top being the highest. But there really isn't that much of a difference right now. In the future, that may change. So I've heard that many people, especially in Canada, are able to get My TV Buffalo and Fox 29, but are not able to get channels uh, 2, 4, and 7 that are in the less robust tier. And that is just because it takes a higher SNR in order to get these stations in, even though it's on the same 6 megahertz band. Thank you for watching this quick overview of ATSC 3.0 by Western New York over the air. Follow the links in the description of this video to check out if your area has ATSC 3.0 available. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. You've been watching Western New York over the air.